Hello. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Uh, it's Kelvin here, and this week, this week, everybody, I am joined by some very special guests. Uh, one of those guests is not a guest. He is my usual co-host, Chris. Hello. Say hello, Chris. Hello, everyone. Say it again without me talking over you. Hello, everyone. That's very, uh, rare, if I'm honest, Yes. I can get a talk without you talking over me. But hello, everyone. Hello there, Chris. And we also have a couple of other uh, people with us this week. We have our friend Ryan, who is in the background. Say hello, Ryan. Hello. He is sat on my sofa, or lying on my sofa. Recumbent. A recumbent. He is reclining on the sofa. And I also have another good friend of us, and hopefully soon to be a good friend of you, Paddy. Hello. Hello, this is Paddy. Hello. This is Paddy. Uh, these are friends of ours from, from many years now, many moons, many years. And we thought we would involve them in our little show on this particular week. So, uh, it's going to work a little bit differently from how we, uh, we usually do things. Same basic idea, but we are going to do it ever so slightly differently. Chris, tell them how we're going to do it differently. Basically, uh, we all chip in a little bit. So, uh, it's not just going to be a case of me trying to entertain you. Yes. I think we might throw in questions. We'll be doing it listeners' questions as well. Yes. We have some listeners' questions that will be thrown in, and we will attempt to talk about them until one of us gets bored. And what happens when one of us gets bored, Kelvin? I ring my little bell. Okay, so the first topic suggested by uh, a listener is... <laughs> Do I go with this first? Yeah. Kelvin's stupid face. That is the first topic. My stupid face. Right, first of all, could I have the bell? Because I have a sneaking suspicion that you're going to start ringing it straight away. <laughs> there we go. You do have a stupid face. You're, you're like Benjamin Button, who has been left in a bath so that it's soaked up the entire bath. <laughs> Creating fold after fold like a poorly looked after. I don't quilt. think that's true though, because I have to say I've often got insults about my appearance. I've been told I look like George Osborne by somebody recently. You sound <laughs> like George Osborne. I've been told, what did Kitten say I look like? Kitten said I look like somebody. Oh, well, he said I look like a big fat man. I look like a fat man. You could. Well, oh, maybe like a fat I could look like a fat man if I was fat <laughs> and and more masculine. <laughs> You're not you've fat, got the though. cheeks you're, of a fat man. You're sort of pigeon chested, aren't you? I, you're uh, yeah. like a little. Yeah. Shit of a man. You are. <laughs> do you know what it is? Where's you, my I, bell? Do you know what I saw the other day? I, I saw uh, one born every minute and you look like a newborn child body-wise. You, know, you actually sort of you look like the placenta that has come out That's of the new That's true. You're like an afterbirth. <laughs> that same placenta. You're the placenta, yet the woman has soiled herself. It's right. been a really <laughs> difficult So you're suggesting year. that maybe my mother didn't pick up the baby but just picked up the placenta. <laughs> and they've been dressing <laughs> you every day since. <laughs> Right, okay, well, excellent, it's lovely. I think if you were to be an animal, be here. I think if you were to be an animal, you'd be something either devious, like a very ugly snake, or like a, or like a, <laughs> what's an ugly bird? A I, parakeet. Uh, you're like a, you're like no, a parakeets very... parakeets are quite nice, aren't they? They're quite ostrich. They're beautiful. Ostrich. ostrich. An ostrich face. You do look like an ostrich, and yeah. And can I just say, I think there's a, a degree of hypocrisy going, because I would say that Crease has one of the most comical faces... Of any person I've ever met, so I don't really see how he's in a position pray to criticise tell, my pray face. Tell what's what is what is comical about my face? Your face is divided into a series of interlocking lumps. Right. Thank you. A beauty. Thank you. Unlike Chris's anything. face is like a relief map of Wales, <laughs> with every every high peak and lofty hill. Yeah, it's really something to behold. It's a beautiful way. I'm not saying it's an unpleasant face. It's not an ugly face, but it's not a, it's not an attractive face either. But it's not no. to say it's an average face. No. It's not ugly. It's not attractive, but no. it's not average. It is a no. comical face. It's the only way I can define it. Do you think small children... I would walk past small children they were pointing to immediately laugh. They would assume babies, that you were a clown by trade. When babies smile at me, it's not because I'm being pleasant to them or anything like that. No. They literally just look at my face and just are very pleased with the shape of it. Exactly. You do resemble a stuffed toy... Or, as I say, you look. Uh, children look at you and assume you are a, a professional clown. A man who was born with the genes of a clown. <laughs> that, that kind of a man. I have been told that I look a little like Mr Potato Head before. That, that's genuinely It's simple. funny you say it. I was just about to say that a much more talented artist than me could probably make your face out of half-cut fruit. <laughs> There's something, I don't know, you know, you've got sure. two melons for the cheeks, you've got sure. an orange for an eye here. Yeah. Probably an orange for an eye, but much lower down on the other side, like your <laughs> face is currently. You do, like I agree. A, you like, look an, like, a, like an expressionist painting. Yeah. Uh, yes, My face yes, is like an expressionist yes, painting. Yes, of an arse. <laughs> 
so yes, there we are. There's our face. Oh, whoa, what's happened? No! Oh, yeah, what's can happened I have my bell back, please? Uh, so the next topic then is, if you climbed a bell tower, where would you aim the gun first? Down. Not at the bell either, because that would do one of those really loud gongs that would yes. probably make you deaf. Probably make you go, 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 go and yeah. then vibrate out of the window. And, and then look down, blink twice, bing, bing, and then yeah. drop. <laughs> yeah, that's it. Sure, yeah. In a big cloud, a big puff of smoke. Do we have to specify where the bell tower that's is? That's a good point, because it makes a big difference. If it was next to a nunnery, would that make it more likely that you would aim at the to shoot a nun. There's yes. nothing else to shoot. There's nothing else to shoot. Do you know what? Why have I turned into a maniac who, uh, when given a gun... <laughs> In a bell tower, I presume that I can only shoot people. <laughs> I can only shoot at civilians. I can stop and not kill people. Okay, now hang on. All right, so that's a fair right. point. That's a fair point. Let me give you, I'm going to give you some places, right? So you're in a bell tower. It's right in the centre of the town. And it's a very the high town. bell tower in the town that you're, you're in, right? Well, it's a town. Do you want a specific town? Yes. It's Gunthorpe. Gloucester. It's a bell tower of Gloucester Cathedral. <laughs> You've climbed to the top of the bell tower with your eyeful, right? And you look down, you can see all the way around the bell tower, and these are what, these are the places that you've got around you. You've got a zoo, you've got a nunnery, you've got a school, you've got a military base, and you've got another man with a gun. <laughs> <laughs> Are my friends with the man with the gun? And you've got uh, anyone else? Let's have a think. And uh, is there any? You. Yeah, yeah. And me, and me, <laughs> and me down there. Do you know what? No, I'm not, I'm not going to include you in that. No, because it will be, make a very too easy obvious. answer. It's too <laughs> obvious. <laughs> Boring question. So, what's the, so what would you do? Well, a lot of people would say, you know, the, uh, out of the choice, I'm not saying that I, I would kill any of the people you've mentioned. They all sound... <laughs> For like, the purposes of the lawyers, <laughs> in case any of us ever goes completely mad and shoots the place up. <laughs> this wasn't a warning, Daily Mail. <laughs> Well, that, that's Am I allowed yeah, to make if it? any of our listeners now go on a rampage with a machine gun, yeah. yes. it will obviously be blamed so on us. Can just we have a disclaimer? Just remind me, there's a... The Daily there's Mail. A, there's a, a school, a zoo, yeah. nuns. a hospital, some nuns. And you said this place was, sorry, Gaza or Gloucester? <laughs> <laughs> a military base. <laughs> I think we've and just... a man with a gun. <laughs> We've seen one little bit into Crease's psyche then. Yes. I don't, I don't remember you saying hospital. And hospital. I didn't say hospital. Well, he, wants, he just wants to find out some know, patients. But I think we know. Let's have a thing. I think probably, I mean, the zoo is certainly appealing. Because as you say, anything you kill. Because anything you, you kill. You can mount it. No, but I disagree want. because you see, I think that there's quite a few animals that take quite a few rounds to put down. Yeah, but like I don't think I'd be interested. I'm not interested in shooting bears and elephants and stuff. I'm interested in shooting something. I would try and shoot the smallest animal it was possible to hit. So we're saying no to the zoo. No to the zoo. Well, my, my concern is that I, I, when we were talking about it earlier, we were sort of almost discussing as though if we had to kill someone. No, I'm saying you are. I want you. You have got no choice. If you don't shoot one of these people, well, I'll let you I am going to shoot. I, I am going to shoot someone. Well, you can shoot them then. I'm not guilty. I would treat it like. No, I'm going to shoot two people. You've got to shoot one. I so will you're shoot taking, you. You're... <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. <laughs> All right, I am behind bulletproof glass with two civilians, and I say to you, you've got to what shoot one bell person tower in Gloucester. In? In Gloucester. In Gloucester. <laughs> the, the bulletproof bell tower of Gloucester. <laughs> Where you can see every all of the town's <laughs> amenities, like the zoo, the military base. <laughs> Would you, and then, well, surely the best answer would be you shoot into an old people's home because they've already had their lives. And none yeah, of them would hear it. they're still people, Chris. Just... They're still people with feelings. Not anymore. Yes, Family. But they're they're not most of their feelings. The moral feelings, dilemma though. is that if you're going to shoot a baby or an old person, you shoot an old person. Yeah, but you could easily counter that by saying if you shoot a baby, they've not lived a full life. Oh, no, I'm sorry. And if they shot well, you, that old person, what have you achieved? Well, no, but if, if I shot, <laughs> whereas if I shot an old person, an old person has, has had a full life contributing to society. And he's built fulfilled up a his pe- potential. Yeah, but he's basically led a life, or he or she's led a, a, a full life and contributed to society. And it's no reward to then get their brain sprayed across the wall of You're the right, old people's home. You're right, they should just stay there. Right, can, I just, can, can we reverse completely to the beginning of this conversation? Right. I think we probably have missed the point. I think they were probably considering celebrities and not when they're saying it. they don't want to hear about us that. killing no but they don't want to think about us killing a nameless child old person <laughs> I don't give a shit or what they zoo want animal <laughs> they're thinking you know what celebrity would you finish off kelvin not in that respect well I'd, i wouldn't i'd have to pick whichever one was in gloucester wouldn't I? <laughs> at the time so i don't know which celebrity would i kill 
ask that question. I'm going to ask a really quick yeah. question. I've got a really good question that I want to ask, right? Piers Listen, Morgan. Listen, you go into a is zoo. This is a topic. Got thinking, yeah. I like how you, this is finally, finally, we've been doing this 10 weeks and he finally comes up with a good question to ask. I think, right, if there was an... I might have to do this again, but I'll ask well, you. Go on and ask it now. Okay. Uh, there is an animal that every single one of its species is extinct, right? It is the last one of those animals in a zoo. Right. Right? Mm. It's going to die anyway, and you are left alone with it for ten minutes. And you can get away with killing it, but, uh, and no one would ever find out. And you would know, you would always know that you had been responsible for wiping, uh, you, for making something extinct, for wiping Why would I do that, though? I don't understand your question. Planet. Why would I? Why would I? Because you could be the, the, the exterminator of oh, a species. Oh, I see. So you, or you, oh, if it dies of old right. age, you've not exterminated it, have you? It's just died of old age. I don't know about the last of its kind. Right. Would you strangle it to death? So that you could say that you say, exterminated a I, species. I have it, exactly. I've well, that depends, I've because it depends what extinct. the species is. Because if it was something really shitty, like a, a type of ant, no one cares if you wipe out a species of ant. But if you were to be killing something, if it was something like an elephant, a species panda, of elephant. The last panda. panda. If I was killing the panda, the last and I panda. could say I was the guy that killed the last panda, yeah, I'd, I'd kill it with my own bare hands if I needed to. I'm not going to lie, Kelvin, you wouldn't stand a fucking chance against a panda. <laughs> Kelvin, He's sedated. Kelvin can barely lift his own trousers <laughs> every morning. I sedate its bamboo and then, <laughs> then I'd kick it to death. No, you wouldn't. You'd be kicking it for about six hours and then it would wake up. That's <laughs> There's an elaborate trap set up, so all he has to do is drug it and then press a button and a hammer swings down yeah. and finishes it off. We'd, we'd find him three hours later struggling to press the <laughs> we'd button. We'd find him dead on the hammer <laughs> three hours later with poison bamboo sticking out of his mouth. It'd be like Wild Eye Coyote. As a, as a panda is taken away by the police. <laughs> I'd get some dynamite, push down the plunger, and I would explode. Yeah, no, you're right. That so would you, I mean, would you kill Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I, I, guess so. Out of species? I think it would be stupid not to kill a panda in that circumstance. If there were only, if there was only, oh, it's, actually, it's extinct anyway. If there was only one panda, How old is and the there panda? was no way 80. it could breed or be made, oh, there's no way they can get any more pandas out of that yeah. one panda, right? Then yeah, I think I think it would be stupid not to to kill it in a big public. Oh, execute you execute. I do it in a big public from a bell tower. You push I, it from a bell <laughs> tower. <laughs> in I do something. I know. I do. I make a big show of it. I'd make a big event of it. People, all the all the news cameras could come from around the world to watch the death of a species. So, I'm interested, would it make a difference if it was a young or an old panda? I mean, the thing is, a lot of people would take umbrage with it. They wouldn't mm. be happy about it. They'd say, it's outrageous, you shouldn't kill the last panda. But, if there's no way it can breed, and it's no way it can be, it can be cloned, and as you say, it's already old. It's an old panda. Yeah. It's a really, it's, it's last few months. It's suffering. I think, yeah, you should kill it, and you should make a big thing of it. Everyone from all the various, you make, you know, you make like the Olympics, you invite all of the different countries to, to come and attend a big ceremony and and then you blow up a panda. Yeah. First memorable injury. Big Jack suggested first memorable injury. And that's the next topic. I had the most middle class injury it's possible to have. That's just not true. Probably having like a polo injury is probably the most hurting your injury. horse. Yeah, hurting your horse. <laughs> it's the most middle class injury. I was playing badminton, Cru- crushed under a medium sized car. <laughs> <laughs> I was playing badminton uh, with my friend Tim down the road. That's a middle class name. It is. Very middle class name. Is. Is. And, name. Uh, I, the shuttlecock ended up on the roof. Of That's the very middle class. And what? I had to, Shuttlecock. and I went and got his dad's uh, A-frame ladder, and I set it up uh, and climbed to the top, using my badminton racket to swing at the shuttlecock, to try and strike it and have it soar down onto the floor, and I hadn't attached the latch in the middle of the A-frame ladder, so I jumped up, swatted at it, got the shuttlecock down in a beautiful little scoop, oh, however... Geez. When I landed, the A-frame simply just collapsed onto the floor and I fell down and landed with one of my wrists on one of the struts and I heard a mighty crack and I fractured my wrist on the first day of the summer holidays. First day of the summer holidays? Guess when it came off? Oh no, it didn't really be ended. Three days, day. three days before the end, three days oh before the end of the summer holidays. Very my, traumatic. My, I, I, I was also, this is more horrific than, than oh, funny. Um, I was in a water fight and Tim from down the road was in the water fight. I got a lot of injuries, honestly. Yeah, I know, tell you. And he was chasing me with a bucket of water down the side of my parents' house. And there was a little uh, private driveway, no, I'm joking. It was, a little concrete <laughs> path. it was a little concrete path down the side of the house. Yes. And he was chasing me. I went round a corner nimbly, like a deer, 
and he hit the corner and he skidded on the already wet ground and fell over and slapped his hand oh on the God. on the floor, slapped his wrist on the floor. And he made a noise that was really inhuman, which still haunts me to this day. I'm not going to repeat it, but it was just a very... A noise like an injured animal. In case it that. haunts you, listeners. And, uh, and he got up and he walked over to me and it was holding his wrist. And I went, what's up? And he oh, no! his hand. And he'd split basically from where his watch would be up oh, to his elbow. And it just opened up and I could see all the inner workings of his Oh, that's his absolutely arm. horrific. Um... And he looked at me, he looked oh me straight in the eyes, God, and then horrible. screamed. And oh. I was in shock, so I just stood there looking at him. You were in shock? He wants the sympathy out of this story. I was in shock. I was mortified. <laughs> Get that dirty thing away from me, said Crease. <laughs> You'll ruin my best badminton shirt. <laughs> you won't be able to play croquet with that arm again. <laughs> Yes. That was it. That and was anyway, it. so we went off and my, my oh, mum really did all the first work. aid. But she had to wrap a tea towel around and like tie it around his arm and hold his arm up because it was just apparently just gushing out of this very large... I mean, I'm not kidding you. It must, the wound must have been like five inches long. Just open. And all the, you could see all the fluffy all little right, bits okay. of fat and all stuff. All right, all right, all right. Bloody hell. It's a comedy show. I can't... Thing. I know. Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. Um, Can you I, ring the bell? Yeah, ring the bell. I'm going to ring the bell. I'll ring the bell. Ring the bell. We know. This, I think that's enough of that, Chris. The uh, right. So the next topic from the chat room is first memorable nightmare. I think my the, the only dream, the only nightmare. Sorry, the only nightmare I can really remember from when I was a kid was when I had a fever one time and I dreamt that the Ghostbusters were all coming to kill me, <laughs> which I suppose made me a ghost. <laughs> I suppose my dream was that Ghostbusters through the eyes of a ghost. It was these terrifying... <laughs> the untold story. These, yeah, it was basically... <laughs> it was like the, the DLC from a Ghostbusters game. It, no, it was these really... It, I remember it was all red. Everything I could see was red. And they were all kind of twisted and malformed. Like they were... It was like a sort of a... Uh, it was basically... It was literally a fever dream. Do you know what I mean? So they were all kind of like stretched out and... Like in a hall of mirrors. And more, like in a hall of mirrors, Chris. Like in a hall of mirrors. They were all distorted and twisted and shifting and changing. And, uh, kind and of this is the Ghostbusters. But this is the Ghostbusters. And I felt like I was being being imprisoned or captured or, you know, oppressed. You were, you were Slimer. Yeah, I was Slimer. I was Slimer in Were this. they mocking you as they well? Were, well, they were gathering around. I don't really remember what they were doing, I suppose. I, I guess they were trying to... They were probably trying to catch me. I don't know. I can't really remember. But yeah, I was I was basically the slimer to these sick, sick Ghostbusters, and uh, and, and I, I woke up screaming for my father. Father, father, <laughs> come here, father, father, father. You, you two the Ghostbusters, very, father. Very difficult upbringing. <laughs> yes, you do, yes. For both of you. Very difficult. Butler, send the butler, father. <laughs> father, send the butler. <laughs> <clears throat> Should we do that one then? Do we answer that I one? think that one's a good one. Okay, next question, as posed by somebody in the chat. Room. Actually, who was it that posed this one? It was quite a good question. This, so where is it? Um... Archie McBlatter. Was it? It was. Oh, it was. You already did was. So Archie McBlatter has suggested the following question: How do you politely turn down a request by your girlfriend to attend a gig of someone not very good? I'll read that again. How do you politely turn down a request by your girlfriend to attend a gig of someone not very good? It's a shit question. So yes, so the reason I think probably the reason why we've picked this one um, is because it's a real life situation. <laughs> it's a, it, someone's really suffering out there. Someone's struggling. Yes. we're here to help. That's that. I mean, that's why we're in radio. This is or like why this is you're a, in radio, dear Deirdre. This yeah. is yeah, yeah, that's yeah. Right. And I mean, I have to answer this. With, I have to be very careful because my girlfriend is listening and she's recently asked me on a number of occasions to <laughs> join her to see musical acts. Because if she's currently bought you some tickets but she hasn't given to them yet... It is my birthday yeah. next month. <laughs> if she's bought you some tickets pain. and she hasn't given them to you yet, now she might be sitting there thinking, you better be fucking nice. Now, on the very rare occasion that you don't want to go along to this gig... Maybe suggesting they take someone who would appreciate it more, but try and spin it in a way. Don't do that. No, though. no, no. But you spin it in a way that makes it sound like they'll be doing a good deed. All right, fine. Let's have a, let's have a practice. Hi, Paddy. Ooh, Paddy. I don't know what your girlfriend sounds like. I've not met your girlfriend, so <laughs> hi, Paddy. Hi. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> a fifty-year-old Texan. <laughs> 
I've just gone through the menopause. <laughs> My voice is so deep because I smoke 50 cigars a day. <laughs> right, let's try that again. All right, okay, come on. Hello, Paddy. I do anything. I'm your girlfriend who sounds exactly like Kelvin. <laughs> I hope that doesn't put you off when I'm shouting your name during sex. Hi, Paddy. I have bought you some tickets to a gig of... Now, who don't you like? Who's someone you really don't like? Kelvin. Kelvin. A gig. A gig by Kelvin. No, a gig by... I don't know. Someone, name a band you don't like. You too. You two. Okay, you two. So, but that's okay. Fine. So that's that's fine. Um, I bought you some tickets to. <laughs> She's like oh, Christmas. Hi, hi, Paddy. <laughs> Buy my new pasta oh. sauce. <laughs> <laughs> Who lives in a house like this? <laughs> Who go to a gig like this? Yeah, Paddy. Come on. Yeah, just, just my normal voice, Kelvin right. voice. Right. Would you like to go to a gig with me? I bought your tickets to go and see you two. A band I know you don't like, no. but I'm going to buy a ticket to them anyway. No. Well, Kelvin, my lovely bride, uh, <laughs> I, I know that your brother is a huge fan of you too. Shouldn't you go with him? Just because I know that it means so much to he's him. He's coming as well. Oh yeah, he's coming as well. <laughs> he's coming as well. I bought him a ticket too. Well, I don't like your brother. <laughs> But I do love you too. <laughs> <laughs> Sorted. <laughs> you could try and tell her that she'd have more fun with uh, somebody else, but not in that way. You know what I mean? Say, well, you know, you should go with one of your friends. I'm not interested in But she doesn't want to. I mean, that doesn't work in reality because if you actually say to somebody, I'm s- oh, I- why don't you go with somebody else? The obvious implication of that is that you don't want to go. The obvious implication of telling them that why don't you it's go with somebody else? It's almost like saying you're you, tired. No, you need to out, you need to, to make it clear to them that the person you want them to take is far more worthy. So you should say, I don't want to go. <laughs> why don't, but why this don't you take the child. Why don't, you, why don't you take this orphaned child who's never been to a pop concert? Because I'm not going out with that orphan child, and I, the, the chances of me going out with them are very slim. Not least because it would mean I'd probably be convicted. So it's not about sex, it's about the music. <laughs> Which I think was pretty much the defence of Ian Watkins. <laughs> <laughs> so that's your that's your solution. That's I don't know. Just I mean, go. Just, just go. go. It's gonna be. But that's easier. not the advice they want. It, that's the, currently that's the only option they had. They wanted an alternative. Burn down your house with the tickets inside it. H- hide the tickets. Oh, no, no, because then, then you've got a day's worth of trying to find the tickets. That's an effort. Well, it depends on your house is burned down. Well, there you go. <laughs> there you go. There's no, there's no go back to that, is yeah. there? Right. Slash your tyres. Slash your own tyres. Taxi, taxi. Break your own foot. You know, misery. You, can't, you know the you film can't misery. The taxi. <laughs> no, no, like the film misery. You know how she hits his foot with a sledgehammer. Do that, but to yourself. Hit your own foot with a sledgehammer. To what end? To say I can't To save go. yourself having to see you too. To say concert. I can't go. <laughs> so you don't have to go. Yeah, she's not going to force you. If she loves you, she's not going to force you to a U2 concert. If you smash your foot with a sledgehammer. She might leave you anyway if you smash your own foot with a sledgehammer. Wow. Well, because well, you think she's too you're stupid. You're a fucking moron. <laughs> you're a fucking moron. Uh, okay, so next topic. Um, right, final... Okay, so final question we're going to do then. Final uh, question is... <clears throat> how would you cope in prison... And would you go on the run if presented with an opportunity? That's a good. That's that's a good. That is question. a good question. So I think I would be pretty bloody cool in prison. Really? So you yeah. would want to stay in there as long as you could? Oh no, no, I don't mean that. I mean they would love me. <laughs> Why? Oh, I'd be so cool. It's like you know, you know Morgan Freeman's character in the Shawshank Redemption. Right. Okay. Yes. I'm that kind of person. You're the one you that everyone know. would want to be. You would. Everyone would want to be around you. Yeah. You'd, would you be? But you realise the, the only reason that he was popular though is because he was always selling them. He's shit. a fixer. He was, he was a, a fixer. fixer. He was a fixer. He used to get all of the, th- you know, the cigarettes and uh, all these sort of things, the posters for people to hide holes behind. No, well, I suppose I'd be more that kind of character. Yeah. Do you think when you go into prison, you have to fit into one of their character roles? I know yeah. how you, you can either be the the psycho, the crime lord who kind of rules the the prison from within. You can be the prison bitch. You can be the hard nosed guard. I don't know. I don't think they allow prisoners to be. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's the role they play in the streets. No. I think they're, they're employed you know, you by the prison service. I, see. I don't think they're just prisoners dressed up. Okay. I know how you'd cope in prison. 
you would go in, you would find the biggest, burliest tattooed man there, and you would become his wife. <laughs> <laughs> you would be the hole behind the poster. Oh. <laughs> Oh no, let's not go down that road. Um, uh, anyway, so yes, yeah, so I mean that is true though. I mean I would actually basically be, but then actually I have actually thought if I was to go into prison, I do genuinely think the only way I could manage it would be if I became the one that everybody feared. <laughs> now bear with me, I can't do it by relying on physical strength, but I reckon I could probably do it by being like a complete psycho. The guy that I say. Don't go near him. And then the guy goes, he's a, he's a fucking little worm. He's a little maggot. And they go, no, 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 seriously. He took a guy's eyes out with his thumbs. So like Buscemi on the air. Yeah, like that's it. Like Steve Buscemi from Con Air. Yeah, that's it. Day one, I would peel off a man's face. How? Well, I, that's not him. I don't know. With whatever's to hand. Some, some plastic cutlery or whatever they've got. <laughs> Jesus Christ. You'd have and to... then, day two, everyone would treat me with kid gloves. Yeah, you're also in prison for the next 74 years. Uh, something like that. No, I'm, but actually, that's another thing. Because if you go in for a really... Because obviously, how you're treated in prison also depends on what crime you've done. It affects how people react to you. So if you're a gangster, people treat you with respect. If you go in there and, you know, you're a child abuser, they, they will beat the absolute shit of you. They'll treat you appallingly. So with that in mind, if I ever did think, oh shit, I'm going to prison for what I've just done, I would immediately commit a very, very serious criminal act so that I'm going to be in prison, but at least I'm going to be in for prison <laughs> so, for something that they'll respect me so for. Get this so, so I go in for a burglary, right? I commit a burglary, no, and then knowing that I'm going into prison, I would do a really big murder. Right. I would kill like five people really quickly before the police caught me. And then I think, well, it doesn't matter because when I go into prison, I'm going to be saying, oh, there's that guy who committed one burglary and five murders. Would it not be easier not to do the burglary? But then you're just being arrested for five murders. Well, do you know the burglary's been done. I've been arrested. I've been arrested. For, it doesn't matter. Yeah, I, 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 uh, drunk and disorderly. I've been drunk and disorderly, right? So you're talking about a, a, a night in a night in the cells. A night in the cells. So I would, so and, and, while the police were chasing me down the street, I would kill five bystanders. <laughs> so so I could go into prison, prison for drunk and disorderly and five murders, and then everyone would say, um, "Oh, there's that fucking psycho." First of all, he gets drunk, and then he killed fucking five people. The guy's a psycho. So the you, guy's a nutter. You're going to kill five people so that your one night in prison isn't too uncomfortable. <laughs> yes, exactly. Because they'll show me more respect that way. Not on the news. <laughs> no, not on the news. Or in But in life. prison, and the prison's where I'm going to be spending the rest but of my life. Night, if you just... No, not if I've killed five people. Stop killing them. <laughs> Stop killing them. Stop at none. I'm sick of police telling me that. <laughs> <laughs> what a sad time it's the end of the show is there any time sadder I often wonder this funerals uh, no well let's not go down that road okay then well thank you very much for listening everybody thank you to Chris as always thank you to Paddy Hi. Our, our friend and guest Paddy hopefully he'll, he'll do another one of these at some point in the future and yeah let's, let's just do the usual bump at the end here uh, you can follow us at Twitter uh, YouTube and indeed on Facebook as Radio Face Comedy so we are Radio Face Comedy on all of those Twitter YouTube and Facebook YouTube we also pull up a lot of videos and clips and various bits and pieces that you might find funny or whatever uh, and that's it so uh, thank you again for listening and until next time bye bye <laughs>